Welcome back to Rewind of the Living Dead. I'm Damon Martin. And I'm Patrick Guerra. And we are here for a special edition of the podcast as we react to the brand new Scream 6 trailer that just dropped. One of the biggest films of 2023 drops March 10th, but the new trailer dropped today. We're going to react. We're going to actually play it and actually have our reaction live while it happens. And then we'll talk a little bit more about it after we watch the trailer. So Patrick, are you ready? Oh, so ready. Let's watch the Scream 6 trailer. Here we go. We are not in Kansas anymore, Patrick. Oh no, we're in New York City. And why is Wednesday Adams in this? <laughs> I like the I like the broken, cracked up Scream face. First of all, we're in a bodega too, so like I know I'm in New York City. Like we're not on a we're not on a boat for an hour and a half trying to go to New York City. We're doing it. And, and and Ghostface uses a shotgun, which is huge. That's different. That's completely different. And to I be love fair, the imagery. To be fair, he didn't bring the shotgun. This is the shotgun he took from the dude. So I just like I like what he's up to. Yeah. I uh, also you know Wednesday. Remember, there she is again. If you ever been to a bodega in New York, you know they don't play this crap, man. Not Fuck no. I it, it, that's how you know it's fiction. He would not have made it out of that bodega. Yeah. I so love. The, I just. I love this. I love the beat up ghost. Yeah, yeah, I'm into that. Very Halloween vibes, like the uh, David Gordon Green ones, not the Corey one. The... You share a <laughs> yeah, please. Do. And there's Hayden Van Pierre. Kirby's <laughs> back. Kirby. This isn't like. Kirby. She's even dressed like Kirby. She's got the pink, like Kirby the like cartoon. A shrine. And there you see what looks like a, 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 a ghost face museum, which would explain yes, where the mask probably came from. I guess who got this museum? That's weird oh. shit. I mean, come on now. We got you know like now. Here's the part that's interesting. Right? Got this is very interesting. Talking to Ghostface. Maybe, but there's never been one. Ghostface, don't play. There's never been one like me. I'm very curious what that means. That means something, right? Uh, oh, that's why I'm gonna. They tease this. They tease this right away. Like Gale's on the run, and this is a legacy character. One of the last ones alive. And this big moment here coming up is, uh, oh boy, I tell you what. Gun that doesn't look like Gail's going to make it from that. Yeah, so let's <laughs> that does this. look bad. It looks, uh, it looks very harrowing. I'm, I'm, this whole thing is, is interesting to me. It feels gritty and big. Sub yeah. Now, here's the other thing. The subway scene. If you've ever been on a subway in New York, you know that you could ride in there, have like 19 killers, and no one would move. Like, they would not give up their seat or anything. Also, most nights when I'm on the subway, there's at least three guys dressed like Ghostface. So that's very par for New York. And there's that scream. They're going to call it Scream 6. We talked about this. Yeah, so it actually is Scream 6 this time. Thank it's goodness. Scream, yeah, that, that whole Scream Not 5 part was really weird. All right. Although I did prefer Ghostface Takes Manhattan. I, that, that was, I, I came up with that. I think it's gone viral. I'm just going to assume it has. Yeah, that was uh, probably one of your best best moments on this podcast. Ghostface takes Manhattan. Uh, thoughts on the trailer, Patrick? It is out there now. To be fair, I am more of the Scream fan. Yeah, of the two of us, but you have enjoyed the Scream franchise as well. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll I'll start with you. What are your thoughts on this trailer? My first thought is, uh, me and Gail Weathers are kind of rocking the same do right now, so I'm cool about that. Um, I'll tell you what. Okay, now I joke around with Ghostface takes Manhattan. I think Jason Takes Manhattan was like one of the first Jason movies I actually saw in a theater. And I was so disappointed because almost none of it takes place in New York City. And it really pissed me off because I'm, I'm in love with like New York movies. I just love them. And this looks very much like it's entrenched in New York City. I don't know if I can't remember uh, reading if they shot it there or not. They filmed it in Montreal. Okay, but in Montreal, which they do that all the time. They double up other cities for New York all the time because it's too expensive to shoot there. But it looks like they're in a big city being chased by Ghostface. I think that's the most important part of all this. I really hope the Radio Silence guys aren't taking a piss and going like, everybody's going to think that, but most of the movie's going to take place on a boat. Don't fucking do that. It's not funny. <laughs> don't do it. I'm fascinated by the city setting as well because every, you know, for the most part, like all the other Scream movies, I mean, obviously Scream 3 took place in L.A., 
So that's a dip. But if you've ever been to L.A. and you've been to New York, it's it world's right. different. L.A. might as well be the small town. With I don't know, I can't remember the name of the small town. Uh, Woodsboro. Yeah, it, it might as well be Woodsboro because L.A. is mostly sprawling suburbs. Like it's not it's not like New York City, which is just piled high with skyscrapers every square inch. That's a totally it's an, truly an urban jungle. It's a different feeling yeah, LA, than New LA York is, than LA. LA. is very spread out. Like you yeah. like you like LA like going from one part of LA to another part of LA will take you 4 hours. Like it's it's really spread apart. Yeah. Whereas in New York you're really on top of each other. So I'm fascinated by that. There's been I have seen some reaction online a few people complaining about Ghostface with the shotgun. Uh, because it's a complete, you know, Stop it. complete uh, departure, so to speak, for the character. Me personally, like, listen, I've said this numerous times. I want to go on a record again with this trailer. We all know, of course, Nev Campbell did not return for this film. She had a financial disagreement. They couldn't come to an agreement, and she didn't come back. I disagree with that. I think you pay her whatever she wanted, unless it's like a exorbitant amount of money, which I just have a hard time believing. So I am team Nev Campbell here. That being said... At some point, the franchise has to move on a little bit, and I like that they got back Courtney Cox. I like that they brought back Hayden Panettiere, but I'm not necessarily heartbroken in terms of the story that they're moving on a little bit from. You know, well, that's, they have to as, as the only ever final girl. Now, again, I love Nev Campbell. I wish she was in this movie, and she's only not in this movie because of a financial disagreement. That being said, again, I'm okay with them moving on. So I love the setting. New York is really cool. I don't mind the shotgun thing because it's not like Ghostface came in, you know, with like a double barrel shotgun in his back. Yeah. He took it away from the bodega owner, uh, which, by the way, that's I'll, I'll have a bit. I'll have a the bodega owners in New York, like generally don't have shotguns under the uh, under the. <laughs> under, Are under you the, sure? I mean, generally they got like baseball bats and stuff. Like, yeah, that's guns, always a given. Gun, guns are a little harder, you know, whatever. But they might have a shotgun. They might have a handgun, whatever. But he took it away from the bodega owner. He didn't come in with the, the shotgun. Is what I'm getting at. Uh, and and him using it in that moment doesn't really, or him or, she, or him or her, I should say that uh, doesn't really take that away. And uh, very much like the Scream Five trailer where they had that iconic line where Ghostface says it's an honor. And then it played into the movie with the whole Dewey thing. I love that. There's never been one like me. I thought that was a really cool line. Can I make a prediction about what that's all about, Damon? And it comes right off the heels. Your Nev Campbell, you know, uh, uh, solidarity. I think it's all a ruse. I don't think Nev Campbell didn't get enough money. I think it was all a fucking smoke screen. I think it's Nev Campbell behind the ghost face. She finally snaps and becomes... I'm telling you, I've had this theory for a long time, and I've talked about it off the air with other friends who are fanatics with Scream, and I never talked about it with you. Nev Campbell's the true villain of the entire series. Sidney Prescott. (laughs) Nev Nev Campbell, the human being, is fine. (laughs) Everybody relax, fandom. Sidney Prescott is the true villain of the series. And and I think that this is all smokescreen, and that it's never there's never been a ghost face like this one because this one is Sidney Prescott and it will it will end with Sidney Prescott's death. It will reveal mask comes off. Oh my God, it's Sidney Prescott. Of course it was all along, and she dies. Whatever she falls from the Empire State Building. However we want to play that. That's what I think is going on. I hope I'm right. And that's a wild prediction, Damon. Wild. Everybody, you know, Fangoria. Dread Central, clutch your pearls because I'm saying it right now. I'm saying it here, and uh, and let it be known that when I'm right about this, a few months time from now, you'll you'll say you heard it first on Rewind of the Living Dead. I'm I'm gonna disagree only because of why she's not in the film. If it had been scheduling conflicts or because she actually did have a TV show that was being filmed for ABC, sure. it ended up being scrapped, but. Uh, if that had been, I think the financial thing is the only reason why I don't buy that because that got pretty serious. Like when you make those kind of statements, it's harder to come back from that. But maybe we'll see, but, dude. But, but I do. Here's what I will say: I do think, based on the trailer, and especially now that we've seen, there's like this ghost face museum. Which, let's be honest, in our day and age, we've fetishized. Uh, oh yeah serial killers for years i mean there's a reason why so many people had a huge issue with that Dahmer tv show yeah it, it seems like it fetish fetishizes killer now i disagree with the notion that making a, a movie about a killer you know necessarily you know, glorifies what they did um you know it, it shines a light on it for sure now i do think the people who are 
you know, wearing Charlie Manson t-shirts and, and, you know, I love Ted Bundy shirts, that's going a bit far. Uh, but to weird. say that, to say that there wouldn't be someone creating like a ghost face museum and having, you know, uh, artifacts and things from murder scenes that's one i mean there's real places like that now in the world Um, yeah so i like that twist i said from the first trailer the broken kind of beat up ghost face mask was gonna be a ghost face mask from a previous killer now what killer that is is gonna Mm. be the interesting part because he's always tied together in some way even though the last film didn't technically tie together they went after a legacy character being, you know, uh, being Billy Loomis's daughter. Right. This time, I feel like they're bringing back Kirby. They're bringing back Gail. There's got to be some kind of tie. And the last, you know, the last one was, um, it was in Scream Two. It was Billy Loomis's mother and the kind of lunatic college student Mickey that she kind of, you know, contacted to help her with this crime. Gotta imagine there's some tie to a past Scream villain. Yes. And that's the mask that they're using, and that's going to be the big reveal, in my opinion. Now, here's another wild theory. Now, we know Matthew Lillard has said very clearly, Stuart's dead. That's what he says. Yeah, that's, that's, what he, that's what he says. That's what he says. Of course, a lot of people say stuff because they know they're t- 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 getting you off the scent. I've seen very great theories that Stewie's still alive. That that he never died that night. That you know he's been he's been locked away in prison. We just don't talk about him anymore. Yeah, that would be a hell of a reveal. That would be even better probably than Sidney Prescott. I think more I people think would like that. Here's my theory, and I actually agree with that because I said for a long time the Stu thing. Now they've they've said you know Kevin Williamson came out and said he's dead. He's dead. Here's my theory. I'll throw this out there before we get out of here. My theory is this: Stu's not behind the ghost face mask. Stu got a television dropped on his head. The dude is not, you know, I doubt he's going to be getting up and running around tomorrow. And, ah, so did my brother. He's still here. And if, and if nothing else, he's probably in prison in somewhere. Here's my idea, though. What if Stu is alive, but he's orchestrating the murders behind the scenes? He's he's bringing people in. Jigsaw the- style. Like, very Jigsaw style, very, uh, again, similar to Scream 2, where Billy Loomis's mother was involved, but she had the muscle, so to speak, in Mickey. Same thing here. He's no longer able to do it himself. Maybe he's in a wheelchair. Maybe he's, you know, in a hospital. But, you know, phones, visitors, maybe. And maybe he's and in there the park. Is, maybe. And there's an implication that there's multiple ghost faces. That trailer implies that there's more than one. I, I love it. I Listen, I know you, you actually hate trailers. I know this because you like knowing very little about a movie. But I, listen, Scream 6 was going to get my money no matter what the trailer sure. looked like. Uh, but I'm way excited now. I'm super anticipatory about this whole entire Scream 6. March 10th cannot get here soon enough. I fully agree. I, I'm, I know I'm going to see it for sure. And you and I, for the most part, we gave a, you know, I know we had some criticisms, but we did give Scream 5 a a pretty positive review outside of it not being called Scream 5. Uh, We did give it a pretty positive review when we reviewed it last year. So we'll see how Scream 6 does. But everything I've heard is good. Kevin Williamson said he saw it. He loves it. He loves the direction they're going in. Now again. He's an executive producer, so he's going to get a paycheck based upon this. So yeah. Hype it up. But <laughs> listen, this to me has been one of the most consistent franchises in horror. They haven't fallen down that rabbit hole of Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th and Halloween where they've lost all the stars and now we're just into you know, B-level movies. And let's be honest, Jason Takes Manhattan, Freddy's Dead. Uh, you know, Halloween, Halloween six. Don't say they're, Freddy's and Dead together, please. It's shocking. They're very, they're very B-level movies. <laughs> Doesn't feel like that, and Scream has never gone down that road. So I'm hoping the consistency stays. And based on the trailer, I am all the way in. Yeah, it looks really cool. I'm excited. We and you'll hear about it on Rewind of the Living Dead. Of course, we are going to review Scream Six, Ghostface Takes Manhattan, guaranteed. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, the trailer's out there. You can actually check out the trailer on our Instagram page. Go search Rewind of Living Dead over on Instagram. We posted the trailer over there. So if you haven't seen it, check it out uh, and watch along with us as we talk about the uh, Scream 6 trailer on this very podcast. And we'll be back with a new episode, a full episode of Rewind of the Living Dead next week. Thanks for tuning in to this special reaction podcast. We'll see you soon. Peace.